Are eggs healthy for people with diabetes or are they problematic? On the internet, people will tell you that eggs will help you keep your blood glucose low, but the scientific research says that eggs actually worsen your blood glucose control and may actually exacerbate insulin resistance when eaten regularly. What's the real hard boiled truth about eating eggs? That's the question. In this video, we're gonna show you exactly what the research says so that there's no question as to whether or not eggs should be in your diet. Now, my name is Cyrus Kambada, and I've been living with type one diabetes since 2002. I co-wrote the New York Times bestselling book, Mastering Diabetes, and I co-created the Mastering Diabetes Method, which is a coaching methodology that has helped thousands of people reverse insulin resistance using their food as medicine. I have a PhD in nutritional biochemistry, and I've been studying the ins and outs of insulin resistance for more than 17 years. If you, my friend, are ready to master diabetes, then you are in the right place. In today's video, we want to discuss something very important because there's a lot of confusion about whether or not eggs are healthy for you and whether you should eat them at all. And if so, whether you should be eating one a day, two a day, three a day, or just a few per week. There doesn't seem to be a very consistent answer when you look on social media. Uh, a lot of people are confused. And as a result of that, we, you know, it can be hard to know the actual truth and whether or not eggs should be a part of your diet. So we did a lot of searching before we created this to try and figure out what are people on the internet saying and what are they asking? And people are asking things like, you know, I've recently gotten back into uh, hitting the gym and one of my favorite go-to breakfasts is scrambled eggs and toast. However, I have read online that eating eggs for you every day can be bad, especially if you have two a day. Is there a limit to how many eggs you should be eating per day? Okay. So that's, that's a perfectly reasonable question. In addition to that, there's people asking questions like, you know, seems like there's a lot of schools of thought here about eggs. I see a lot of people advocating that eggs are inherently unhealthy and that you should consume them as in a minimum quantity. Um, on the other side, you see that there's a lot of carnivore and ketogenic individuals who are suggesting that eggs are one of the healthiest breakfasts that you can eat and you should actually increase your intake of them. And you know what? Don't worry about how much cholesterol is in them. So what's the truth? Is it one egg? Is it two eggs? Is it three eggs? Should I have them in the morning? Should I not have them in the morning? Should I eat them at all? Right? I get it. It's confusing. And trust me, I had to study eggs inside and out for many hours and many days and many months in order to really understand what the research says. So that's what I want to present to you today. It's not just a question of what my opinion is. Okay. My opinion is irrelevant. Science doesn't care what I think. I'm here to tell you the actual truth that comes from the scientific research. Now, part of the reason that eggs are so popular is because they're actually a relatively inexpensive source of animal protein. They're also a good source of B vitamins, and they also contain a significant amount of irons, but they're also high in cholesterol and they're high in saturated fat. And the research demonstrates that foods that contain saturated fat and foods that contain cholesterol are actually causative in increasing your LDL cholesterol, which is the quote unquote bad cholesterol. So we're going to get into detail about that. Now, Americans have actually been consuming fewer eggs since the 1970s when the research first showed that cholesterol levels in your blood were linked with the development of cardiovascular disease and that eggs could contribute to an increase in your LDL cholesterol. So as a result of this, there's a lot of people who are recommending that people with diabetes don't eat carbohydrate rich foods, because if you eat carbohydrate rich foods, then that's going to spike your blood glucose. And one of the things that you can do to lower your carbohydrate intake is you can add in other foods that are, that are both protein rich and, and uh, fat rich. So eggs are the perfect food to put in your diet. If you're trying to eat a low carbohydrate diet, especially as a lot of these key ketovore, I'm sorry, uh, ketogenic and carnivore advocates are telling you how to do it. Okay. So the thing is, is that data from controlled studies and large scale epidemiological studies have actually failed to find a clear association between dietary cholesterol intake and blood cholesterol levels. So in the seventies, we had one piece of information back in the nineties, the recommendations were modified. They were then modified again. They were then modified again. So in today's world, 
it doesn't necessarily, it's not very clear as to whether or not eggs contribute to increased cholesterol and whether cholesterol increases the cardiovascular disease risk and whether that has any implications in diabetes at all. So the simple way to think about it is this, the confusion about whether eggs are good for you stems mainly from the confusion about whether cholesterol itself is good for you because you can't really separate the two of them, okay? It's hard to decouple them and that's one of the reasons why so many people are confused, okay? But the question that we're trying to answer is actually more specific than are eggs good for me? It's not that simple. The question that we are trying to answer is even more in depth, which is are eggs good for you if you're living with any form of diabetes? That's the question, okay? And in order to answer that question, we got to dive deep into the research because that's where you're going to find the actual truth because there's actually a very clear difference between what happens to people who eat eggs, who are living with diabetes and who are not living with diabetes. And we're going to see exactly what that is. Okay. Now, the last thing I'll say to this is that there's many social media influencers who talk about the fact that you should eat more eggs and you should eat more protein rich food and you should eat more fat rich food. And they'll actually show you images like you see on the screen right here, which is that when you add eggs to your meals, if you're living with diabetes, you can actually blunt a post-meal blood glucose spike. So you can see here in the top panel that if you eat just 100 grams of papaya by itself, your blood glucose can get elevated by about 40 points. But if you add two eggs to that same meal, then your blood glucose doesn't rise as much. And that's generally considered a good thing because heck, if you can blunt the post-meal blood glucose rise, then that's a, good, that's a good outcome. But this type of thinking is actually very short-sighted because what it forces you to do is only put on your short-term goggles, which say, <clears throat> what is my blood glucose doing in the next two to three hours? And whatever, whatever I can do to control my blood glucose in the next two to three hours is the most important thing. But it neglects <clears throat> the long-term effects of adding eggs to your diet. It neglects the long-term effects of adding more protein and or more fat into your diet, which if you've been following master, Mastering Diabetes for some period of time, you know at this point that adding more saturated fat into your diet actually causes insulin resistance and worsens your glucose control. But you'll only recognize that if you fast forward and look over the course of months to years. Now, in essence, there's two parts of an egg which are distinctly different from one another. The first is the yolk and the second is the white. In order to understand the egg a little bit more deeply, let's understand the nutritional difference between both of those parts. Now, the yolk itself is a storehouse of cholesterol and saturated fat, and it also contains some fat-soluble vitamins and minerals. One egg yolk contains 55 calories, which is 4.5 grams of total fat, 1.6 grams of saturated fat, 184 milligrams of cholesterol, and small amounts of vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin B6, and vitamin B12, okay? The egg white is mainly a storehouse of protein, okay? Now, one egg white contains 17 calories, which is not a lot. It contains zero grams of total fat, zero grams of saturated fat, zero milligrams of cholesterol, zero grams of carbohydrate, and about four grams of protein. So, an egg white is effectively a pure protein versus the yolk, which is a little bit more diverse in its nutrient supply. One thing to add to that is that the egg white itself contains no appreciable vitamins or minerals and can effectively be just be thought of as effectively a pure protein. Now, in order to fully understand egg nutrition facts, we have to back up one more time and ask a simple question, which is how do eggs affect both your short-term disease risk and your long-term disease risk? And I'm going to hammer this point home because I do it all the time. I care about what happens to you in the short term, but I care more about what happens to you in the long term. So I need you to put on both your short term and your long term glasses to make sure that you're doing things that are going to control your blood glucose and your cholesterol level right now and today. But I also want you to recognize that what you do today affects your risk for heart disease and diabetes and cancer down the road. Okay. By understanding the metabolic effects of eating eggs, you're gonna gain insight into how eggs actually increase or reduce your risk for chronic disease. Now, we have to turn to the research and I keep on hammering this and, and this is very important because we have to evaluate eggs from multiple perspectives rather than simply fo focusing on the connection between eggs and only a single chronic disease. We have to look at the entirety of the picture because there's a lot of information in scientific research. Now, adults with diabetes, whether it's type one or type two, are two to four times more likely to develop heart disease or stroke than non-diabetic adults, period, end of story. 
The reason for this is simple. Elevated blood glucose increases the risk for all forms of cardiovascular disease, including a heart attack, a stroke, angina, and coronary artery disease. We have to ask another question, which is, do eggs in particular increase the risk of cardiovascular disease or death from diabetes? And the only way that you can analyze these results is by looking at multiple different types of research studies, okay? Epidemiology is a type of research that refers to large scale research that's conducted in large numbers of people over long time scales. Okay, that's the way that I like to rationalize epidemiological studies. I'll start by saying that there's a lot of people who claim that epidemiological research is worthless. You see this all over social media. Anytime you, you, you claim that you analyze an epidemiological study or anytime you take a look at a, uh, a large scale study, people just throw in the trash can and say, this is dumb. It's, it's, uh, it's irrelevant. And the reason is because these epidemiological studies rely on what are called food frequency questionnaires or FFQs, okay? Which essentially are questionnaires that ask people, how many eggs did you eat on average last month? How many did you eat last year? How many did you eat in the last three years? Okay, now the reason why those questions can be kind of silly is because it's, it's hard to answer those types of questions because most people can't even remember what they ate for breakfast last Friday. So asking people to estimate how many eggs they ate months ago or years ago is notoriously inaccurate. Now, I'll agree with that, right? Food frequency questionnaires are not the most reliable source of information, but when you study epidemiological research in thousands of free living humans, and these are humans that are living in the wild in their home environment, then there's really no other way to do it, okay? That's exactly why researchers perform, in addition to epidemiological research, smaller scale studies in which they carefully control the amount of eggs that they provide to subjects. And when you do it this way, there's no mistaking how many eggs somebody ate because you can watch it, you can measure it, and you can record it with precision. So nevertheless, large scale epidemiological studies have a time and a place, and they're helpful in understanding the trends that occur in large samples of the population over large timescales, which is usually more than five years. The trick is to combine the epidemiological results with the interventional data, which is the small scale studies, and when you do that way, then you get a chance to understand whether there's a commonality between what you see in small groups versus what you see in large groups over large periods of time. In other words, when you interpret both small and large studies together, it begins to show you that there's trends that you can identify from analyzing, that you can't identify from analyzing only one type of study. Multiple studies involving more than 80,000 people found that eating more than six eggs per week significantly increases the risk of cardiovascular disease in people living with diabetes. Now let's get into the nitty gritty details. This is where the super nerds are gonna love it, okay? If you're a super nerd or you're somebody who really likes to dive into the research, then you're gonna love this section. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's gonna get research heavy. So put on your research hat, okay? The first paper was published in 1999. This is the first paper that we're gonna talk about, published in 1999, and it analyzed the health outcomes of more than 37,000 men aged 40 to 75 years and more than 80,000 women aged 34 to 59, okay? The researchers found that after adjusting for age and smoking and other lifestyle factors that contribute to coronary heart disease, they found no evidence of a significant association between egg consumption and the risk of coronary heart disease or stroke in either men or women. So in other words, eating six or more eggs per week has zero measurable effect on an increased risk of coronary heart disease, okay? And these are the types of studies that the general public cites and says, hey, look, eggs are good for you. I can, I can prove it because that paper just demonstrated that there's no, there's no negative effect from eating, uh, from eating up to six eggs per week. However, we're gonna get a little deeper because the question that we're answering is, are eggs smart or dangerous for people living with diabetes? So this paper did a subgroup analysis on people specifically living with diabetes, and they found something very different. They found that men who ate six or more eggs per week doubled their risk of developing coronary heart disease. And women who ate more than six eggs per week increased their risk for coronary heart disease by 49%. Now that's interesting because it shows that when you've already been diagnosed with some form of diabetes, eggs go from being potentially harmless to actually quite harmful, quite harmful. It's very interesting, okay? Now, the second paper 
that I want to talk about was published in 2007. And this paper, just like that previous study that we looked at from 1999, okay, in this paper, the researchers found that eating more than six eggs per week does not increase the risk of stroke in people who had no pre-existing conditions at the beginning of the study. So we see the same thing between the first two studies. But those that are living with pre-existing diabetes at baseline, it, eating six or more eggs per week doubled the risk of coronary artery disease. Now, these results came from studying 9,734 adults, 349 of them who were living with diabetes. So it's the same pattern that we saw with the previous study. If you don't have diabetes, then it doesn't seem to be too much of a risk. But if you are living with diabetes, then your risk for the developing coronary artery disease and coronary heart disease goes up significantly with an increasing amount of egg consumption. So think about it this way. Two studies performed by different research groups in separate subjects, eight years apart from each other, okay, discovered not only the same trend, but found that people with diabetes increase their risk by the same magnitude when eating six, six eggs per week. That's important, okay? This is when repeatability happens. This is a very strong signal that the trend is likely to be real because in order for science to be credible, science has to be repeatable. Otherwise, it lacks scientific rigor. Now, in 2008, the physician's health study found that the consumption of more than one egg per day resulted in a 23% increase in the risk of what's known as all-cause mortality, which is premature death from any cause. In this study, information on egg consumption was self-reported by the individuals like I talked about earlier. And they used a simple, abbreviated, semi-quantitative food frequency questionnaire, blah, blah, blah. It's a food frequency questionnaire that asks them to report how often on average they've been eating eggs uh, during the past year. Their responses include number one, rarely or never. Uh, number two, between one and three a month. Uh, number three, between one, about one a week. Number four, two to four a week. Number five, five to six a week. Or number six, daily. Okay, and then finally, as people can respond with, I eat more than two eggs per day. Now, this information was obtained at baseline and then at 24, 48, 72, 96, and 120 months after they were randomized into one of their groups. Now, this study analyzed more than 21,000 participants over the course of 20 years. And they found that egg consumption of about six eggs per week was not associated with the risk of all-cause mortality, which follows from the previous studies. But the consumption of seven or more eggs was associated with a 23% increased risk of death after controlling for many confounders, okay? This is interesting because the data from the nurse's health study indicates that eating more than seven eggs per week doubled the risk of all-cause mortality in male subjects and that eating more than seven eggs per week increased the risk of heart disease in males living with diabetes. Now, these are really important studies because all-cause mortality is the ultimate risk factor when evaluating the effect of any variable in your lifestyle. If your risk for all-cause mortality increases due to any single variable, it means that your risk for premature death, de premature death increases significantly, and you should pay attention to that, okay? If I were to tell you that sleeping less than seven hours per night increases your chances of premature death by 20%, would you care? If I told you that drinking more than two alcoholic beverages per day can increase your risk for premature death by 30%, would you pay attention? Okay, what this paper is suggesting that eating one egg per day or seven eggs per week increases your risk for all-cause mortality, and that's something you should certainly take into account. And if, if you're living with diabetes, then especially for you, eating more than one egg per day can significantly increase your risk for premature death. This is very, very, very important. And I want to make sure that you guys understand that this is not Cyrus's opinion. This is not anybody else's opinion. This is what science has found. And this is what science has repeatedly shown multiple times over and over. Hey, thanks for tuning in. My name is Cyrus Kambata, and I'm the co-author of the New York Times bestselling book, Mastering Diabetes. Now, I struggled with diabetes for years following conventional medical treatment, and my health deteriorated 
before my eyes very quickly. I then decided to take my health into my own hands and do a deep dive into the scientific research. And after years of learning the nitty gritty details of insulin resistance and experimenting with my own lifestyle and helping other people reverse insulin resistance, I then co-created the life-changing Mastering Diabetes Method with Robbie Barbero. And that has helped thousands of people master diabetes once and for all. Now, if you wanna learn those secrets, well, they're right here in this book. And you can get your copy if you visit masteringdiabetes.org slash book, or click the link in the description. Now, this book has more than 3,000 reviews and has changed the lives of more than 100,000 people living all around the world. And it's designed to be your gateway to living a lifestyle that's guaranteed to reverse that annoying condition called insulin resistance that lurks behind the scenes and makes your blood glucose hard to control. And whether you're living with type 1, type 1.5, pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes, or gestational diabetes, this book has a wealth of knowledge and more than 800 scientific references inside. Now, trust me when I say, this book is designed to be a game changer for your health. So head on over to Amazon and pick a copy today. If you're ready to be the next success story, then visit masteringdiabetes.org book or click the link in the description, pick up your copy today, and let us know what you think. Now, if you're enjoying the science, then trust me, we got a lot more to go, okay? This is just the, the tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg, all right? <clears throat> In 2009, researchers published a prospective study using data from the Physician's Health Study 1, which studied more than 20,000 male participants, and from the Women's Health Study, had a total of 36,000 and change female participants. This study reported something very interesting here, which is that men who reported eating seven or more eggs per week had a 58% increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes. And women who reported eating seven or more eggs per week had a 77% increased risk of developing diabetes. So let's get a table on the screen here because I want to show you how to read through this type of scientific information because it's really important, okay? This increased risk was also calculated after adjusting for potential confounding variables such as age and BMI and whether they smoked and drank alcohol and exercise and had a history of high cholesterol and high blood pressure. So once you take away all those variables, you can isolate whether or not eggs had any uh, influence on type 2 diabetes risk or not. So you can see here on the left-hand side, it says egg intake per week. It's, it starts at zero, then less than one, then one, two to four, five to six, and, and seven or greater. And then there's two columns that have highlighted yellow values. So the, uh, the, the first column in the middle of the screen is for men. The column on the right is for women. And you can see that as the number of eggs per week increases as you go down from zero all the way upwards of seven or more, the risk for the development of type 2 diabetes increases significantly, okay? And you can see that it goes from 9% to 18% to 46%, all the way upwards of 58%. Now, similarly for women, you can see that women who ate less than one egg per week had a 6% increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes. And then as they ate more, it went from 6 to actually 3% negative, which is confusing. But then it went up to 19% increased risk, 18% increased risk. And then by the time they got to seven eggs or more per week, they were now at a 77% increased risk. And again, this is measured when excluding a whole bunch of confounding variables, which could also contribute. And again, those confounding variables are things like age, BMI, smoking, alcohol consumption, exercise, a history of high cholesterol, and a history of high blood pressure. So this is very powerful data here because it demonstrates that in both men and in women, there's an increased risk. Women seem to have a 77% increased risk of type 2 diabetes with increasing egg consumption, and men had a 58% risk, but both of them trended in the same direction and followed the exact same trend as the previous research that we saw before. If we move to another study, it's called the Insulin Resistance Atherosclerosis Study. This was also published in 2009, and it included 880 middle-aged adults who had no diabetes at the beginning of the study. After five years, 144 individuals developed diabetes, and all participants completed a 114-item food frequency questionnaire, which is very long and very tedious. Now, again, this study showed a very clear positive association between egg intake and diabetes, independent of age, sex, and race, a family history of diabetes, glucose tolerance, 
at baseline energy expenditure, smoking and energy intake. Okay. We're going to get rid of those variables and we're going to isolate. What do eggs do to your risk for type two diabetes? And people who ate no eggs or very few eggs were the least likely to develop diabetes. And people who ate the most eggs were the most likely to develop diabetes. Now you can see here, it says the pattern was characterized by higher intakes of food groups, uh, uh, of, of the food groups like red meat, low fiber bread and cereal, dried beans, which is interesting, fried potatoes, tomato vegetables, which is also very interesting, eggs, cheese, and cottage cheese, and a low intake of wine. So you can see here, for the most part, they're mainly animal-based foods, but then there's a couple of plant-based foods like uh, you know, low fiber bread and cereal, dried beans, and tomato vegetables, which are also included in a not very ideal food profile. Let's keep going. The Chinese cohort study. In this study, researchers surveyed uh, 2,849 adults in China in 2002. Each study participant completed a food frequency questionnaire and provided three ways of weighed food, three days, excuse me, of weighed food records. And they had their blood drawn and analyzed multiple times. This paper was published in 2011, and they found that eggs were linked to diabetes risk, especially in women. And the link between egg and diabetes remained even after all the other variables such as age and calorie intake and education and family history of diabetes and sedentary activity were excluded. So if you look at the table on the screen, which it has a lot of numbers in it, I'll, I'll be the first person to tell you, okay? The very, the, the left group of columns refers to men, data collected from men, and the, the right collection of columns uh, are data collected in women. At the very bottom of the screen, you see it says FPG, fasting plasma glucose. And if you track what happens to men as their intake of eggs increases at less than two eggs per week, their fasting plasma glucose is 1.8, okay? 1.8, so basically means the risk of developing type two diabetes is, is only at 1.8. Then if you increase that from two to six eggs per week, the risk increases to 3.3, and then eventually at more than one egg per day, the risk for the development of type two diabetes increases to 3.4. That's a big, big, big increase. Same thing in women, it goes from 1.6 north of 4.2. And that right there is this, another indicator of exactly the same pattern that we keep on seeing over and over and over again which is that the more eggs you eat, the higher your risk for the development of type 2 diabetes. And again, if you're living with pre-existing diabetes, then the higher your risk for other side effects that can increase your chronic disease risk. Now, 2001, listen, are, are you, do, you, do you want more science? Because I got more. I got more if you want, more, okay? There's still a couple more studies that I want to run through here because, uh, you, you know, there's, I want you to understand that there's no shortage of evidence that demonstrates the same pattern over and over again, okay? Next study, 2001, case control study, okay? It's performed at an outpatient clinic in Lithuania. Lithuania. The study included a total of 234 people. So this is a small scale, scale study, and this is not an epidemiological study. So you can't really throw this under the bus and say, oh, well, this is done with a food frequency questionnaire because it's not, okay? These people were diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, and uh, there were also 468 people who, were, who had not been diagnosed with diabetes who were included in the study, okay? The results of this case control study were published in 2012. And after controlling for BMI and family history of diabetes and cigarette smoking and education and morning exercise and fasting plasma triglyceride levels, here's what the researchers found. Number one, there is a two-fold risk of increased, an increased risk of type 2 diabetes for individuals consuming three to five eggs per week. Number two, there is a threefold increase in the risk of type two diabetes development in people who ate five or more eggs per week. And both of those are in comparison with people who ate one egg or fewer per week. Now, these are big numbers. These are very big numbers. And what that means is that if you eat what seems like a harmless amount of eggs, only three to five eggs per week, like how bad could that be for you, right? Well, three to five eggs per week increases your risk of the development of type two diabetes. If you don't already have it, it doubles. It literally doubles your risk. That means it increases your risk for diabetes by 100%. That's kind of a big deal. And that if you don't have type two diabetes and you eat five or more eggs per week, then your risk from developing type two diabetes goes up by 200% for a total of a three-fold risk. This is very important information.
Okay. This is something that you really want to pay attention to because again, this study was not an epidemiological study. It's a case control study and it performed in a small number of people in a very controlled environment. And they were able to replicate the same type of results that you get from epidemiological research, which is very interesting because it shows that both small scale and large scale studies trend in the same direction. Now, if we go to the Malmo diet and cancer cohort, okay. In Malmo, Sweden, researchers recruited 27,000 non-diabetic individuals and almost 1,000 individuals living with diabetes. And they ran them through a similar detailed questionnaire about their socioeconomic uh, status, their lifestyle, and their dietary factors. Okay, Like other studies that we've mentioned so far, this one also found that high intake was linked with an increased risk of the development of diabetes. Now, let's see what they Found. You can see on the screen here, this is known as a forest plot. This is actually a forest plot turned on its side. And what you see here is the researchers have, have analyzed what happens to people who increase their intake of either protein or processed meat or red meat that's not processed or poultry or fish or shellfish or eggs or milk, yogurt, and cheese. And what you find is that uh, the way to look at these forest plots is you take a look at a particular group. Like we care about the egg group. So if you just take a look at the egg group, you'll find that there's one, two, three, four, five different studies that were that were uh, analyzed within that group that isolated the effect of eggs on type 2 diabetes risk. And what you're looking for is whether or not the mean of the risk was above the flat, above the line or below the line. If it's above the line, that indicates that there's an increased risk for the development of type 2 diabetes. If the mean is below the line, that means that there's a decreased risk of the development of diabetes. And in four out of the five studies, there's an increased risk. And that increased risk is anywhere from 10% up north of about 22%. So that right there is not necessarily a very strong association, but it does demonstrate that the trend is that as you increase your egg consumption, the, uh, the risk of developing type 2 diabetes increases, and it's a conserved trend amongst four out of five studies. That's also very cool. Now, there's another meta-analysis including 14 studies in over 320,000 participants. This is, again, this is epidemiological. Researchers found that egg consumption increases the risk of diabetes in a dose-response manner. What the heck does that mean? Dose-response basically means if you increase your dose, is there a corresponding increase in risk, okay? So if that means, if, if you drink one glass of alcohol and it's associated with a, a low risk of breast cancer, and then you, you increase your risk of breast cancer with three glasses and then five glasses and then seven glasses, that means there's a dose response relationship because as you increase your intake of alcohol, you're also increasing your risk for the development of breast cancer. The same thing happens here with eggs and diabetes, okay? Compared with the lowest category, High egg consumption was associated with a 68% increased risk of diabetes. And the dose response analysis showed that for each four eggs per week, the risk of developing diabetes increases by 29%. So if you look on the screen, what you'll see here is the risk of developing diabetes shown in a forest plot. And the risk of developing diabetes is shown with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven different studies. And then the very bottom uh, diamond indicator is the average of all of those studies. And you can see that the average diamond indicator indicates that there is a approximately 1.55 increase risk of developing type 2 diabetes um, when studying people who eat the most eggs. Okay. In other words, if you eat in, in the studies that demonstrated, in the studies that, that identified groups of people that are eating the highest quintile of eggs, meaning that the highest amount of eggs per, per week, six eggs, seven eggs, or more per week. When you're eating eggs at that level, then your risk for the development of type 2 diabetes increases by more than 50%. Okay. Again, the numbers are very slightly different from study to study, but they all trend in the same direction. Okay. We're seeing the same exact pattern unfold over and over and over again, which is that more eggs increases diabetes risk, period, end of story. Okay. Now you also see that there's an increased risk of cardiovascular disease in patients who are living with pre-existing diabetes. So on the screen here, what you'll see is the same thing. Another forest plot demonstrating that one, two, three, four, five, six different studies all determined whether or not increasing egg consumption had a positive or negative effect or on, on your risk for the development of diabetes. And of the one, two, three, four, five, six studies, 
one of them showed that there was no effect. The other five of them showed that there was an increased risk for the development of diabetes. And again, the magnitude of that increased risk is a little bit greater than 50%. So it's the same pattern, my friends. It's the same pattern over and over again. If you don't have diabetes and you eat a significant amount of eggs, about one per day, you're increasing your risk for the development of type two. If you already are living with diabetes and you begin to eat the same amount of eggs, you're significantly increasing your risk for the development of heart disease. And that can be very problematic because it can become even more significant than the, than the fact that you have diabetes in the first place. All the health science on the internet today can make your head spin, right? Well, guess what? It makes my head spin, especially when you're trying to apply real science to your life to change your life for the better. I'll be the first person to tell you that I get frustrated with most of the nonsense that I see online about how to lower your blood sugar and how to lose weight. I've been studying the ins and outs of nutritional biochemistry for more than 20 years. And I have a PhD in the subject of insulin resistance, which means that I've read more than most humans will ever read on this subject. The reason why this is important for you is because my team and I have created a coaching program, which is backed by real science that has helped real people just like you really reverse insulin resistance and do it for good. And make no mistake about it, Insulin resistance is the one thing that will make your blood glucose hard to control today, hard to control tomorrow, and hard to control years into the future. So it's absolutely essential that you understand exactly what insulin resistance is, what causes it to grow, and how to get rid of it using your food as medicine. Now we've assembled a team of expert coaches. We're talking dietitians, nurses, and certified diabetes educators. And they're all here for one reason, to help you master diabetes and achieve your ideal body weight permanently. Now, if you want average health or you don't mind being frustrated controlling your blood sugar, your cholesterol, your blood pressure, and your body weight every day, then this personal coaching program is not for you. But it is for you if you wanna have the best health that you've had in years to fully reverse insulin resistance, regardless of whether you're living with type one, type 1.5, pre-diabetes type two, or gestational diabetes. This personalized coaching program can change your life permanently. And we know that because it's changed the lives of more than 10,000 people that we've worked with directly and the number goes up every day. To get started, just visit masteringdiabetes.org start and answer some questions about yourself. Then schedule a free consultation to talk with somebody on our team who will show you exactly how we've transformed the lives of thousands of people using this exact method. It's important for you to answer all of the questions to the best of your ability because we wanna be able to help you assess whether you're a good fit for a personal coach. We have a limited number of spots available and that's why it's imperative to find a good fit. Again, visit masteringdiabetes.org start to schedule a free zero commitment discovery call and start taking control of your health today. I hope you're extremely overwhelmed with all the science that we just presented, and that's been done on purpose. The reason is because I get a little bit frustrated when people say that there's no evidence or there's insufficient evidence to indicate that there's a positive association between egg consumption and diabetes risk or between egg consumption and cardiovascular disease risk in people living with diabetes. There is a wealth of scientific data, and we have seen in both small-scale studies and large-scale studies that the data trends in the same direction. Okay. There's, it can be confusing. I get it. I can, I, I'm the first person to admit that myself, but if you see just how much research there is, I mean, there's, there's, uh, you know, meta analysis after meta analysis, after meta analysis, after case control study, after randomized control trial, after epidemiological study. And most of these studies show the exact same thing, which is that there's two conclusions that I want you to walk away from this video with number one, if you do not have pre-existing diabetes, there is a significantly increased risk for the development of type 2 diabetes as your intake of eggs increases. When you go from eating zero eggs per week to one egg per day, the risk of developing diabetes increases by as much as 58%. And can increase from there depending on the type of study that you're looking at. So if you don't have diabetes, then eggs are not considered a safe food for you because you increase your long-term risk for the development of high blood glucose insulin resistance and type 2 down the road. But if you are living with pre-existing diabetes, then eating eggs is actually more detrimental to you because 
the more eggs you consume, the higher your fasting blood glucose will go, the higher your risk of stroke becomes, the higher your risk of a myocardial infarction or a heart attack, and the higher your risk of all-cause mortality. So even though eggs look cute and they're fun and you can decorate them and you can have Easter egg uh, hunting contests and, and enjoy the culinary delights that come along with eggs, I really want you to understand that regardless of whether you're living with or without diabetes, they're not considered a safe food. But what's more important is that if you are living with diabetes, then your risk for the development of other complications increases significantly. But in addition to that, if you're living with diabetes, there's also a dose response relationship between the number of eggs that you eat and your risk for heart disease in particular. So if you turn to me and said, hey, Cyrus, I don't eat one egg per day. I just eat a couple of eggs per week. My answer to you would be, okay, fine. That means that you're increasing your intake of eggs. Maybe you're not at one egg per day or seven eggs per week, but there's a dose response relationship, which means the more you eat, the higher your risk for diabetes down the road. Okay. A dose response relationship is a fancy scientific way of saying the more you eat, the higher your risk, no matter how you slice it. Case control studies involving hundreds of people, meta-analyses of case control studies and large-scale epidemiological studies all point in the same direction. Eating more eggs increases your risk for the development of type 2 diabetes. And eating more eggs increases your risk for the, the development of diabetes complications and all-cause mortality, which is the hardest of all endpoints. So please know this when consuming eggs because I don't want you to think that they're safe for you, that there's not enough evidence to demonstrate that there's an increased risk. Whether you're living with diabetes or not, your risk for developing complications of diabetes increases significantly. And now you have the truth.